the depths of the Savage Lands, a lone brute has carved out his territory in blood and bone. Abandoned to the mercy of the jungle as a cub, he fought to survive, fending off vicious beasts and scavengers. Yet this struggle has forged an alpha predator, relentless and unflinching, tearing through anything that gets in his way. Reckless, savage, and uncontrollable, Reinar is driven by his bloodlust and base instincts. Everything around him becomes a threat as he blindly butchers everything in his path. And thanks to some powerful new additions to his deck from Dynasty, Reinar is once again posed to take the Blitz meta by storm. So let's break down his Blitz deck as I've constructed it and talk about how the hero works, what he wants to do, and how he can rip his opponents to pieces. Reinar is a 4 intellect, 20 health young brute hero in Blitz that says when you discard a card with 6 or more attack during your action phase, intimidate. Intimidate is a keyword that says target hero banishes face down a random card from their hand. At the beginning of the end phase, return all cards banished this way to their owner's hand. So by triggering this intimidate effect, Reinar essentially limits your blocking capabilities for the turn. Yes, you may receive those cards back at the end of the turn, but by pushing massive amounts of damage and taking away key options for blocks, you're hamstringing your opponent's ability to play on their own turn while simultaneously threatening catastrophe to their life. To better understand how we actually go about triggering Reinar's Intimidate effect, let's take a look at one of his attack action cards. Savage Feast is a one cost six attack brute action attack that defends for three and says as an additional cost to play Savage Feast, discard a random card. Keep in mind, if the card that is discarded has six attack, then you will trigger Reinar's effect. You will also trigger Savage Feast's second effect that says, if the discarded card has six or more attack, draw a card. So by playing cards like Savage Feast that trigger a discard from our hand, we are able to trigger Reinar's effect and pull cards away through Intimidate. We can also gain benefits from the discard as you see on Savage Feast. That of course isn't the only way we can trigger Intimidate on our opponents because some cards have Intimidate printed on them. For example, Barraging Beat Down Red is a brute action that defends for three, costs nothing, and says your next brute attack this turn gains. If this attack is defended by less than two non-equipment cards, it gains plus four. It also just has the Intimidate keyword along with Go Again, meaning that when you play this card for free, you get a potential buff on your next Brute attack, an Intimidate trigger taking a card away from your opponent, and the ability to follow it up with something big from hand or a weapon swing with a buff. So by leveraging these large attacks that force discards from our hand, or by playing non-attacks that have Intimidate, Reinar is able to disrupt the normal blocking structure that your opponent may want to take and allow you to push damage over the top of their defenses. Now that we understand Reinar's general game plan, let's break down the equipment and weapons that we use in this deck. Jumping into the equipment and starting with the weapons, we are mainly running two Mandible Claws. The Mandible Claws are both one-handed claw weapons that attack for three and say once per turn action pay two to attack. They also have the text that says, if you've discarded a card with six or more attack this turn, then uh, Mandible Claws each gain go again. So you can swing with one with go again and then either follow it up with a big attack or swing with a second one after that. Now, we do side in Romping Club sometimes into specific matchups, and for brevity's sake, I'll just point you to the uh, deck guide for this. The written out guide is available for all patrons. Um, just understand, if you support on Patreon, I'm so thankful that I put your name in all my videos. How fun is that? That's so exciting. So if you want access to this and other written deck guides, feel free to jump down into the Patreon link in the description. Uh, otherwise, just understand that we're almost always playing Mandible Claws and you play Romping Clubs in like a few matchups where uh, you feel like you're never going to swing twice 
or you feel like the the one swing weapon value is uh you know more appropriate for the matchup also we play arcane lantern instead of one of the mandible claws in wizard matchups so keep that in mind as well now as far as the equipment is concerned this is perhaps one of the best budget decks for equipment wise that you could ever put together and it performs incredibly well partly because we have now embraced the beaten trackers from dynasty it's a rare leg equipment that blocks for one has battle worn so it doesn't explode after you block with it and it says whenever you discard a random card with six or more power destroy these and if you do gain an action point so you can choose to activate these and gain an action point this card is so good it's so good it is almost single-handedly vaulted Rhinar back to the top of the meta it's that good it's kind of insane alongside of this rare equipment that costs like 25 cents is bark bone strapping we play bark bone strapping now instead of uh Gandalf spring tunic i guess you could run tunic but uh we just kind of throw that to the wayside because now that you can basically guarantee a turn where you go crazy with beaten trackers you might as well get the just added one resource to two resources um, on that turn to really push it home so bark bone strapping uh, you can activate it at instant speed, destroy it, roll a die, get half that many, um, you know, resource points based on what you roll. And it also blocks for one, which is absolutely insane. Now, if you want to spring for the big, like, money equipment, play Crown of Providence because it blocks two and fixes your hand. This card is very powerful. The fact that it can just fix your hand or your arsenal at any given moment is really good. But if you don't have the cash for it or you don't have the card already, just run something like Hope Merchant's Hood. Hope Merchant's Hood activate at instant speed. No, it doesn't block, but at instant speed, you can fix your hand. It's kind of the same thing minus the block, kind of. Uh, the block is very important. The block is very good, but Hope Merchant's Hood also functions greatly for this. And then finally, we have um, another swap out for the headpiece, Skull Horn, which is in basically just an arcane barrier to uh, head equipment that we run for wizards. And then our gloves, our, our gauntlet choices are either Goliath Gauntlet which is an arm equipment that you can destroy and uh, give your next uh, two or greater attack action card plus two or null rune gloves to stop uh, more arcane damage from wizards. Okay, now let's break down the meat of the deck, the attack action suite and the cards that kind of fit alongside of those attack actions. Uh, really, they're all attack actions, but allow us to kind of pitch and, uh, you know, do tricky things based on what we discard and that includes cards like two copies of red pack hunt two copies of red pulping two copies of savage feast one copy of savage beatdown i may change that to two but right now i kind of like the one copy i feel like it fits okay uh the two copies of skull crack which is really good and then two copies of swing big and two copies of wild ride those are all of your red big attacks and they are quite good and in fact some of them serve dual purposes for example skull crack can just be a red six now normally you wouldn't really want it to be a red six because there's so many of these other cards that have better upsides but if you end up playing this and hitting the discard on this like if this gets discarded at random well then you gain a resource and that is incredibly good in this deck particularly when you hit it off of something like savage feast uh, because usually you try to over pitch for Savage Feast, float a resource, and then come in with something else after that. Thanks to the addition of Beaten Trackers, it gets really easy to do that. Uh, and so Skullcrack discarded off of that. Very, very powerful. Now our yellow attack action cards serve dual purposes. Some of them have gadget abilities that can come in handy in a pinch. Some of them are just like vanilla generic good attacks that you can play in a pinch. All of them pitch for two, which is a great kind of break point in our resource system in this deck. Uh, and then some of them even have just like some really good upside. So for example, Beast Within Yellow, we run two copies. Barraging Bighorn, we run two copies. Uh, two copies of Reincarnate, a really good new card from Dynasty as well. Riled Up makes the cut. Savage Swing Yellow, Smash Instinct as well. And then finally, we run two blue attacks. And those are Wrecker Romp because the classic Wrecker Romp has to make the cut because it's a blue. It pitches three, it blocks three and it meets the requirement for discard. In this resource suite of attacks, things like Beast Within stand out uh, because they can just do some crazy things. Beast Within being discarded triggers its effect, banishes the top card, makes you lose a life, which is important, but get, basically just draws you a card to replace itself. And if you miss, then you kind of repeat the effect, but 
Honestly, it's just really good. And Reincarnate, which is a new card from Dynasty, has been feeling quite nice because if you manage to discard with this or if this is be becomes discarded, it just goes to the bottom of your deck and you know that you're not burning through your deck as quickly as you sometimes can. So all of these attack action cards basically serve to allow us to trigger Reinar's discard, to intimidate cards from our opponent, and to push massive amounts of just big chunk damage. And sometimes, because of beaten trackers, uh, we can now go like double wide and just really come across for the big ol' swing and the big ol' finish. It is a very powerful, heavy-hitting deck, and in a format like Blitz, uh, things go quick. Now, as far as non-attack actions are concerned, the big one that we want to consider and the reason that we're running Mandible Claws is for Blood Rush Bellow. I have found that based on the way that this deck is constructed with some of these new additions and these new cards, Blood Rush Bellow has gotten a lot more consistent and this may just be personal bias based on when I last played Reinar, but I feel so much more comfortable playing a Blood Rush and kind of knowing that I'm going to hit on it and then also follow up and like connect with multiple things. I feel like the resource base has gotten better with some of these new dynasty cards and uh, that coupled with the equipment that we've gotten, specifically uh, those beaten trackers, uh, Blood Rush Bellow feels very scary. And if you don't know, Blood Rush Bellow is like the linchpin card, <laughs> like for uh, basically all brutes in some way, shape or form. But it basically says, uh, as an additional cost to it, you discard, and if you hit the discard with you know it being a six or greater, um, then you're going to gain two extra cards into your hand and this gain go gains go again. So you're basically drawing two cards and this card doesn't just immediately end your turn. But the biggest part is that it gives all of your attacks plus two, which means when you play this and you connect with it, which is almost every time you play it because that's the point, you're ensuring that you're gonna hit. When you play this, you're giving both of your claws plus two. So you can come in for five and five, and if you have the resource base for it, you can even follow that up with a big ol' attack on the uh, back end. And at the very least, because you're drawing into new cards that have a good solid resource base of possibly yellow or blue, uh, you can do claw, claw, and then maybe even, uh, you know, like a big attack on the back end. And that is a back-breaking maneuver. Blood Rush Bellow, the MVP of the deck, if you can find it and land it, but in addition to that, you do have other powerful non-attacks like Barraging Beatdown, a classic from WTR. We run every copy we can, so two reds, two yellows, two blues. Uh, it just intimidates for you, and it sets up a big ol' attack. Again, it makes all of these attacks that you run that much scarier. They're all pushing a breakpoint of six or higher, so why not we uh, drive that point home even further and push more damage? Then we do run two copies of Blue Primeval Bellow, specifically so we can use it to possibly high roll and trigger the Savage Beatdown play. Because Savage Beatdown is a card that can get very nasty and push crazy amounts of damage. I have uh, only ever played this card once, and it may be because I'm only running one copy in the deck, but when I did, it pushed for 14 and lethal when my opponent had one card in hand. So uh, if we can go Primeval Bellow into a Savage Swing, or sorry, a Savage Beatdown, I should say, then you can do some absolutely crazy amounts of damage. And we do run two copies of Sand Sketch Plan because then we can tutor out whatever we want on a specific turn and also possibly even set up, you know, like a crazy turn with the uh, Savage Beatdown or a Beast Within to grab something. So basically, it's sort of like a gadget card that allows us to go and grab an attack or what we kind of want to set up for an attack and uh, see where the dice fall, where the uh, discard falls, if you will. And then finally, the last card in the deck and one of the best, one of the best ways to win a game is Reckless Swing. Reckless Swing for Lethal. It's been around since the beginning of the game in 2019. Reckless Swing for Lethal, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we play the game for. It is a defense reaction that blocks four says discard a uh, random card from your hand as an additional cost to play this. By the way, it costs nothing except the discard from your hand. And then it, if, uh, you know, if you discarded a six power or greater attack, well, then, uh, you know, you deal two damage to the attacking hero and they can't block that. They have to like Oasis respite it. <laughs> That's like all they can do. Uh, or they just die because you play this at the end of the game. That's the point. You block with this at the end of the game when your opponent's at two or less and it's a checkmate. It's the old checkmate play. This card finishes so many games. 
and uh, it's just an auto include. <laughs> you have to include it. It's so good. So this is what my current Reinar build looks like, and I'm not gonna lie to you, I am in love with it. It has been a lot of fun to play around with and uh, push lots of damage. As someone who doesn't play a ton of Reinar, picking this up, putting it together, picking it up, and then jamming a bunch of games, it feels really good. It feels really good to just throw lots of damage at my opponent and then let them figure it out for once. I play wizard all the time and uh, now I don't have to do all the thinky thinky and I just get to throw a bunch of damage and uh, then use my thinking plays uh, for how I best calculate my opponent's face being punched backwards. That's literally what this deck does and it has gotten so much more consistent and honestly so much scarier with some of these new cards from Dynasty that it is sitting at tier one. Again, if you would like a copy of this deck list, the deck list without the guide is in the link in the description. Um, also, I think the top comment should also have it as well. But if you want the, the breakdown and the like matchup breakdown and the side, well, not sideboard guide, but the uh, equipment sideboard guide and uh, just like how to play the deck, that full written guide, check out my Patreon. It's gonna be up there in the next day or so. Uh, but yeah, that's the deck. Please let me know what you think in a comment below and what deck you would like to learn about next. I will build it. I will make a video on it. I will test it and then we'll talk about it all together. If you enjoyed this or you got something out of it, make this number. Wait, wait, there it is. Make this number go slightly, slightly higher. Just like, I don't know, one, two. Well, in this case, we need three, three higher and we hit a like a really nice round number. It's backwards for me, so I'm pointing in the wrong direction but it makes a nice round number. So feel free to make that happen by pressing a red button. As always, thanks for watching.